Hi there, I'm Teresa Lowe from Teresa Lowe Communications and today I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Dr. Olivia Hurley. She is the Assistant Professor of Psychology and Sports Psychology at uh, IADT, that's the Institute of Art, Design and Technology in Dunleary. She's a Chartered Psychologist with PSI and that's the Psychological Society of Ireland. She's an accredited sports psychologist uh, with Sport Ireland and she's the author of Sport Cyber Psychology uh, back in 2018 and I think uh, Olivia your, your uh, college is the first in the world to have set up a, a master's uh, degree in cyber psychology. Is that right? That's correct Teresa and thank you so much for the lovely invitation delighted to be here and hello to everybody who's tuning in and listening in so Hopefully they'll get a few little nuggets of wisdom over the next five to ten minutes. We're so delighted that you could join us today. And of course, this series is an online series on confidence and how people can boost their confidence level, uh, particularly at this time. Um, but so a couple of questions for you, um, uh, Olivia. From, from a, a psychological point of view, why can you tell us why is it important to address low self-esteem, low self-belief, low levels of confidence? Okay, well, I suppose the, the, the most important element of it is, is that, you know, when we have low self-esteem, low self-confidence, it kind of stops us from doing a lot of the things that we really would love to do in life, okay? Um, you and I spoke before many times about kind of this importance of being brave and yeah. being brave and getting out there and doing things where we feel that we're contributing to society and we're making, um, a, you know, a positive purposeful contribution is, is so important. I think this series is about the confidence also that comes from within. And it takes a while to build those foundations. So all about the negative imagery and, and all that kind yeah. of thing. Talking, talking in a very respectful way to yourself and respecting yeah. yourself. Um, Absolutely. So I think the confidence, when, when the confidence does start to build, you won't rely on external factors. If somebody doesn't give you the, the, the positive feedback, it won't destroy your day the way yeah. it can when yeah. somebody doesn't have that level of confidence, you know. But criticism, is important, but 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 not to take it personally. And a confident person won't take it personally. A confident person is somebody who actually actively seeks out feedback and constructive right. criticism because they are relying on, and it's one of the things that actually people who are trying to develop resilience use in some of the stuff we talked about before, that mental fortitude training. Mm -hmm. It's where they actively seek out from people they really trust from that social support network that they've developed for themselves, that constructive criticism where they want to get better, they want to develop that kind of what we call personal growth. So they look for opportunities and they're not scared by somebody giving them negative feedback in the sense of something being, well, you could work on this or this could be better or whatever. The best of us, and this is a, a really important point, is that nobody is perfect. And in fact, when athletes and people that I work with, they often think that what I do is help them to strive for perfection. That is absolutely not what we do. We work on achieving personal bests, achieving yeah. what is their true potential. Um, but it's never that we would set a goal or a target of being perfect because perfection is not attainable. You know, if you are striving for, for perfection all the time, you're going to be constantly disappointed in yourself and in a way quite cynical and negative about the world around you because nothing is ever perfect because it's a very subjective thing. By whose standards are you benchmarking yourself against? So a lot of what I would do with athletes and, you know, as you probably know, even people in your own fields, they're their own harshest critics in many ways and they're the biggest self-doubters of themselves. Yes. Um, is that they seek out the, the feedback from people they trust and they know for to help them to de develop that self-belief and that self-confidence, but in a way that isn't threatening to them. And yeah. it's a way that they really- That's very important as, as, to have, you know, have those few people in your life that who are going to be very honest, very constructive, yeah. very positive, and you take the, the advice or the feedback and you, you, know, you, you absorb it and you run with it. And if it's something Absolutely. that you do to make yourself better. You're talking about working with athletes and that you don't tell them to, to aim for perfection. Is it the case that, for instance, say a runner, you, 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 you'll work on, on small goals, you know, a, a, maybe a fraction, a fraction of a fraction of a second 
in terms yes. of their personal best time that you know we're going to aim for that this week and that's a huge that, that's a small but it's huge in another way and when they Absolutely. keep trying that is that what you do and it, it's about knowing the differences between kind of we talk about kind of goal setting or target setting a lot and in my field it is something athletes really do and performers do relate to because they are very target driven and they they like to go see their progress um, and it's very objective then so there's a couple of things we we often your your listeners and and viewers might know things like outcome goals performance goals process goals in sport it's very funny in interviews they hate hearing journalists and so on the process words because they think it's very boring or we focus on the process but the key thing to remember is that if you have athletes talking all the time about an outcome which is the result the winning or the losing that's not what actually helps performance. Performance is about, it's about setting, as you said, standards, personal best, performance goals. And to do that, you need to set process goals. And process goals are the things like technique, fitness, those little benchmarks and training all the time that keeps them coming back for more, that give incremental little performance benefits, that then ultimately the outcome looks after itself. You know, you can never be sure about an outcome. A referee could make a decision at the last minute and you're, you know, your result is, you know, scuppered because you've got a penalty at the other end. And, and it's not something you can control. Whereas process and performance goals, you absolutely can. And it goes back to the SMART principle. So that's specific goals, measurable targets, being A for action focused. So S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable. If you say to somebody you're aiming for perfection, that's not measurable. It's like, well, what is that? It's, it's too it's subjective. Perfect. It's perfection, but by, by, by what standards, okay? So A, action-based, being very action-focused. So stop thinking about it, get up and do it. So do the thing or try the thing at least. Not aiming for perfection, just give it a go. Be brave and have a go. Or realistic. Sure. The world is not rose-tinted glasses. Mm -hmm. So I often hear people say as a sports psychologist, are you all about the positivity? Are you all about that? Yes, I'm all about helping athletes to be positive in the way they think and in how they, you know, their body language and how they project themselves, but be real about it. You yeah. have to be real. Realistic is so important, you know, and being realistic about not being perfect and not getting things right all the time and not being, seeing the rose tinted like glasses perspective sure. of the world. You so have important. to temper all of that with a bit of realism. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And the T stands for time faced. Exactly what you've said. So being very specific in terms of when do you want to achieve that target by the end of the day, by the end of that training session, by the end of the week, the month. And for people who are not elite athletes, that's like during lockdown, really important. You know, how many steps a day are you going to set yourself as a target just to keep yourself moving? And moving, we know, is very good for our mental health as well as our physical health, obviously. So little targets and little goals, but that are time phased. When do you want to have achieved this by? Really important. This sounds to me like I was going to ask you that not all of us, of course, are, are elite athletes. Uh, many of us will not fit into that category ever. <laughs> Let's be realistic, uh, as you say. Um, and I was going to ask you what from your work, what pointers uh, could you give to the rest of us from the work you do with elite athletes? But you kind of already kind of dealt with that insofar as sure. smart. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking smart. This Being fantastic smart. acronym, that can apply really to all of us, couldn't it? Absolutely. The SMART principle is a principle that actually, in sport, we've done a lot of research on how effective it's been for helping athletes reach targets, but actually the research would show that in the general population, in business, in organisations, there's actually a lot more research supporting the application of SMART principle target setting than even there is in sport. So actually in business and in everyday life, it's even more research how to say supported than it is in sport so for everyday life for people using the smart principle really important so just I, I think there's there's a couple of key things if again if people want to like kind of my go-to phrase it would be just to act their way into the feeling rather than feel their way into the action that's a really important thing for now in everyday life with covid and trying to navigate our world there's so many things we can't control so ultimately it is about you're not going to, don't expect every day to get up and to feel great about the world and feel great in yourself. That's unrealistic. That's not going to happen. So it is about saying and being mindful of what are the things that I know once I've done them, I tend to feel better afterwards. And that is like getting up, having your shower, having your cup of coffee, getting your steps in, getting active during the day, 
finishing a work project or making some inroads into it. Don't expect yourself to feel great before you do the task. That's not real life. That's not realistic. So as my mentor, Professor Aidan Warren, used to always say, act your way into the feeling. So do the action and feel great afterwards rather than waiting to feel great about it before you do it. And, and it's like, yeah, I've, I mean, you know, some people are finding it hard to get out of bed in the morning. Some people yeah. have anxiety and, you know, numbers have gone up. We're talking about positivity sure. in the pandemic as well. This, this is an offshoot of, the, of this online series and confidence. Um, but for instance, you don't feel like getting up. Make yourself get up. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. You don't feel like doing that walk. Make yourself do the walk because you're going to feel good after it. You're going to, it's, it's, we're yeah. talking about small goals. You're talking about incremental goals with, with your athletes, Absolutely. With the rest, athletes. But for the rest of us, you know, a simple goal might be, I'm going to get up today. I'm going to have some self-care. I'm going to have a lovely shower. And I'm going to go for a walk. Or I'm going to do something that I've been putting off for a long time. I'm going to yeah. absolutely declutter that cupboard yeah. in the kitchen. And I'm going to feel good absolutely. after it. I won't like particularly doing it, but I like the feeling I have after, after I've done it. You absolutely. Know. And it's really important. There's a really, um, as some writing that I'm doing at the moment that I'm using a phrase to tell people to do what's called like a little hot debrief. So when you've gone out for the walk or when you've cleaned out the cupboard or when you finish that work project, Take a moment and it's not a big task. It's literally a couple of seconds to just give yourself a little pat on the back and say, now, why do I feel great now having done that? Yeah. So it might be, well, I feel great because I've been really wanting to do that. And I knew it would take effort, but I feel great now. Just allow yourself to kind of take that moment to actually process how you feel. You know, you've got your endorphins pumping and your adrenaline and your dopamine and your serotonin when we do a task and we do it well to completion and we've achieved that little goal that's what happens our body emits these amazing buzz chemicals and we get this buzz from doing the task allow yourself after you've done the task to take five to ten seconds just to go I feel great now, those hot debriefs, because when you then are procrastinating and lying in the bed and going, I don't really feel like doing it today, those little things pop into your head and you go, okay, I knew I wouldn't feel great beforehand. I didn't the last day, but boy, did I feel great afterwards or girl, did I feel great afterwards? You know, there's so much apart from your great knowledge, but there's an awful lot of common sense in this as well. Absolutely. Uh, it's really valuable advice for people to hear at the moment. I'm really grateful to you. The, um, the hot debrief, uh, just before we go, is there a military connection? What, what's the, why is it called? There is, that's right. And I'm very impressed that you remember that, Teresa, from past chats we had. That's right. It actually comes from, um, I was actually at the very beginning of COVID on a few really good uh, webinar uh, Zoom calls that I, that I, I checked into and, and, and registered for. And I won't go into who the organization it was, a sport organization, but they had an army, um, a, a guy who was actually, I won't give you his name, but he was like a like secret service, a SEAL, you know, one of these military covert operation operation uh, leaders and he said that that's a lot of what they do so in really high danger fearful when you're in that stage your 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 adrenaline is still pumping your body is still in a state where you are it's actually one of the the the, the times where your memory even get it's, it's so vivid yeah it really it resonates with you so that even when you've calmed down and your adrenaline levels have dropped and you're kind of in a restful state your memory of the event is bred or having done this hot debrief at that time wow. than it is if you kind of waste a couple of hours to think back how did we feel yeah. after we did that better just immediately after it's happened immediately yeah now and the key is that it's really short it's it, it yeah. sounds amazing um and um, you know i'm thinking of people like performers and you know please god when they're all back up and running again um, a performer or somebody, a singer who goes out and performs and you're talking about finishing at 10 o'clock at night and you have that buzz and you have that adrenaline. It might be a good time to have some self-reflection then. Absolutely, and, when they yeah. into their dressing room or even as they take their bow on stage to just literally take that moment as the curtain is coming down to go, I feel amazing. Yeah. Why do I feel amazing? And I want to feel like this again. So it's just literally oh. those moments that they take for to to do those things is really important you're in demand there's a few people uh, uh sending you messages i was just going to say i don't know who that is that are, are that are popping in but... some top athletes no doubt but you've been oh absolutely of common sense for for the rest of us dr olivia hurley thank you so much for joining me today thanks my pleasure teresa take care Bye -bye.